Dan Osborne in the house. How are you, buddy? I'm how good. Are you today? Good? Yeah, good. How are you doing? Um, I'm wonderful. I'm very excited to have a little conversation here. So, let's just go from the very beginning. Uh, where were you born? Where were you raised? Uh, I was born in a place called Barking. Uh, it's in Greater London, like the edge of Essex. And um, it's not the nicest of areas, but I was brought up there and I was raised there. And oh, look what we have. But, like, I still go to my mum's and I sometimes like I have dinner with them. I still see them all the time. But yeah. my mum still calls it my home. But it's, <laughs> it's, I don't really live there. <laughs> After high school. What did you do? Did you at high school as you come? How you guys call it here in the UK? It's um, you got your level, level secondary school. Yeah, secondary school. Yeah. There you go. And you got your A levels, and what was the next? Or did you? Yeah, I did. I did like my. I did obviously my GCSEs, like everyone does, and then I went to sixth form to do uh, B Tech Sports. That's like three A levels in sports. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a PE teacher, and uh, I was doing that for about two years. And in the meantime, like my tattoos, I started getting tattoos when I was fourteen, and uh, and I just always loved tattoos, and I loved to draw all the time. And I was in sixth form, and I was there for like mm -hmm. a year and a half. And I only had six months left. I should have got my A levels, really. But what was the reaction from your parents the first time when you had a tattoo? Hey, mom, look at this. My mum went crazy. I was on holiday with my dad, and, uh, and then uh, my mum. Uh, I run my mum and said, "Mum, I want to get a tattoo." I was only fourteen, but I was in a foreign was, country, I so I didn't care. And, I, and my mum was like, "You come home with a tattoo, you're in big trouble," and all this. And then my dad was like, "Look, once it's done, she can't take it off." <laughs> my parents so, were mental when I coloured my hair. First yeah. Time. So and then I, I just kept getting them from then, 15, 16, 17. And then they they didn't bother you anymore, did they? No. Nah, really so tell me about the artistic part. So when you realise when you have a talent or you, mo most of the times talent is one thing, but just the interest in drawing stuff. When you yeah. were uh, just always as a kid, like when we go on holiday, I'd sit on the balcony and just draw like the boats and stuff that I could mm -hmm. see, and I just always loved drawing. And when I like, obviously when I was a young kid, I liked to draw like cartoon characters and stuff. I used to watch the Looney Tunes and, mm -hmm. and stuff like yeah. that, and uh, Space Jam, and I used to draw like Bugs Bunny with a basketball and stuff like that. So because then it was also also the time when the, they came up with the idea of these little books when you just really quickly flip them and yeah, it, and yeah. have you ever tried that i have yeah i've done one where uh like where the little stick man does back somersault <laughs> so you go like that and, yeah and there it does go. a back somersault and that's one of the things what you want to learn do the somersault. i want to learn to do a somersault yeah, 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 yeah. I, so i used to do uh, trampolining so that's why i've always uh, wanted to do it but i've never had the guts to do it off the floor oh that's very oh. interesting because oh so that in your case is just a psychological stuff it's really just like the spring off the floor that's all I worry about like when I'm on a trampoline I can stand still and do the back somersault but you've got that bounce yeah 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 and yeah. I, I feel like I need that I mean like the, all the gymnastic stuff is just uh, it's so much psychological it's just the focus you know it's always been focused so how do you see yourself in I would say 5-10 years I mean uh, people know I'm not going to mention about this people know that you are in the reality show very well known all over the place um, specifically in UK, of course, in Essex, of course. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought about actually being an actor, going in that path? Or yeah, that's that's what I've always wanted to do. Like before being on TV, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be an actor, and I, like, I got into modelling, and I, I went to LA. I've got an agency in LA, and I, I went to LA for a while, and then that's when I really wanted to start acting. And then, like about a year and a half, two years after that. I got asked to go on to a reality show and then mm -hmm. when an opportunity comes up you'll see it's good so you, you take it and but oh. i still want to get into acting yeah, that's, yeah. that's what i want to do that's like my career aim so i don't know whether that's going to happen or not but but you understand that acting is not always about just being very attractive no, nah. that's what I love about it. You see, like, you see, when I, where I'm on a reality show, and I find it hard to play myself because mm -hmm. you're on camera and everyone's judging you as you, like how you really are. Like, if I'm playing someone called Paul, the, that's whatever what you can, like, being an actor, you have to have the ability to embarrass yourself and not care. Like, you're 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 playing someone else, so no one's going to judge you as like oh, Dan Osborne does this, or yeah. you're playing someone else. And that's what I love about it. You can just go wild and do whatever's on the script mm -hmm. and and play it. And just really go for it because so you're, you're not saying you th you're saying it's for you it's more difficult to play yourself yeah i feel like i'd find it easier playing someone else than actually being myself on have camera. you ever tried to be in plays and theater plays or well i'm doing panto uh, next month so that's the first time on stage i know panto is a bit like jokey so you make you have fun and all that but mm -hmm. yeah i'm playing jack in jack and the beanstalk so i'm, I'm uh, doing yeah, it yeah i think i've seen the, some of the posters yeah somewhere, uh, pictures yeah, yeah yeah is there like proper script or you just go yeah there there's and, a script yeah smile? no there's, there's a <laughs> Proper script is like a full show. I have to sing as well. You have to sing yeah, as well. Yeah, I have to sing four songs. 
Wow, if your singing is as nearly as horrible as your dancing, I can just imagine what's going to happen there. It's going to be a disaster. <laughs> I've never had singing lessons, no. I just, uh, I just listen to Michael Bublé and sing along in the shower. <laughs> you were very lucky that you were so good looking, you know. <laughs> just like only smiling. I was like, I don't care. He, he can hit the note. He just looks amazing. Book him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so then that's that's what is your main passion. That's it's your main goal. Aren't, aren't you a little bit afraid of, you know, when you look in the serious actors, and not even serious actors, but someone who you know studied in Rada, for example, a Royal Academy of Arts and stuff for mm. four years, and they spend so much money and they train so hard, and then they look at you, someone who got a reality show where you didn't need a lot of training, mm -hmm. you're just playing yourself, and then just put these two people on kind of okay, there is a part. So who's going to get it? And it's yeah. like, aren't you a little bit afraid that the, these people who are in industry are going to look on you like... Yeah, they will kind of a bit they'll definitely look down on you. They'll see it as like, oh, you're only here because you've been on TV. But yeah. like, believe it or not, reality TV, it's not as easy as it looks. You don't. It's not just a camera following you around or anything like that. It is, like, it is hard work and we do, like, we do work hard on the show and it's like... It's, it, it's it's not as easy as it looks, you know. Mm. But yeah, obviously people and even people that are like casting the show, they will look and be like, right, he's done acting school for this amount of time, he's done a TV show. Mm. But if you go there and you're, I believe it's a lot about presence and the, and the way you are, and you you walk into a room and it, I think within five minutes they know if they'll want you or not. I believe that, and I, like, and I think if you go in there, I know someone might have done four years or whatever, but like I'd I'd happily I'd happily train for it. I'd happily do like acting lessons but I think I think you do you do have it or you don't like if you mm -hmm. if you're comfortable in front of a camera you you can you can do it and I think you you kind of know it's like you can do lessons but some people that do lessons for years and years don't get any work and then if someone like for instance like like Zac Efron he, he done like lessons and stuff but he knew someone that was doing the casting for High School Musical went for it tried his luck he couldn't really sing mm -hmm. and they trained him up to be what he is and now he's a Hollywood star and then you've got other people like George Clooney. He was he couldn't afford his acting lessons, so he was sweeping the floor of his theatre for five years yeah. to pay for his lessons. And now, look, <laughs> like, so it works. It works both ways. I think there's a little bit of luck in it as well. But if you go there and you sell yourself, I'm, yeah. like, and I think if you believe in yourself, you can do it. And if you keep trying, like, because at the end of the day, we are in the point in uh, in right now this 21st amazing century is that um we to the point where it's not only about your education it's not and it, that's mm. not in just the acting industry or movie everything. industry. everything it's everything yeah so some people now graduate like amazing universities spend mm. so much money and they just hope you know someone is just gonna yeah give them but the it isn't how it is you still that's, have to work for it once you've come out of seven years of university you might not get work uh, you, nothing's guaranteed and then some people that don't even go to do further education and they just go straight into something, work their way up and they're earning great money and doing good for themselves. That's I, think, true, yeah. I think it's about the drive you've got inside you as well as as well as well learning. Yeah. So it's like, it's a, there's loads of things that come into it. How do you motivate yourself? Uh, well, my career has always been really important to me. Like, I've always wanted to do well in my career. I've always wanted to be like do TV and acting and stuff like that. I've always wanted to do this. So it's almost like now I've got the opportunity, I want to do it. And then, and then once you have a kid, you want to then work and earn money to give him everything he wants. And when he grows up and stuff, that's like the number one thing. But like my career has always been important to me. And then sometimes you do, you still wake up just like every other job. People think that you're living the high life, but you do wake up and you're tired. Like tonight, I will have probably three hours sleep and I will get up and go to the airport. Like, mm -hmm. There is days where you wake up and you think, oh, I can't be bothered. But it's your work. You get up, you've got to do it. It's, do. it's what you have to do. And, it's, and then once you're doing it, you, it's good fun. It's not like... I mean, and if it's something that you want to do, you do it. Like. Some some jobs that people do, I'm not working in a store or whatever, yeah. and they just do only for paying their bills. Yeah, for their money. Yeah, of course. Different. Yeah, it it's is different. different like story. that's. That is different, and then obviously it's hard. Obviously, it's hard to it's hard to say about that. But you like, yeah. but you still have your it, struggles. You still have your challenges. There is still times where, it's yeah, it's still times where, you, like, everyone has their own problems in life, and yeah. do you know what I mean, I've certainly got mine. So it's like <laughs> it's not it's not like everything's all fine and dandy. Yeah. Danny, you're 23 now. Yeah, that is like wow, you're really young. Uh, so you have pretty much serious stuff going on with your family. You have baby, two babies, and all that stuff. I, I'm not gonna go in there. But I was just kind of wondering in my head, um, have, have you thought about that, because now you have all this serious uh, family stuff, do you think you kind of don't do something what you would like to do? 
maybe it's not always about you know partying whatever mm. maybe about traveling maybe about experiencing something else and now you kind of say you know because i have all this responsibility in my life i can't really just go and do whatever no luckily lucky enough all my work is all in the uk and if i've got an appearance i go and i'm back the next morning and yeah. it, obviously the show that i'm on is in essex that's where i live so i'm quite lucky so but if, if I did have a job, like if I got into acting and I had to go away working, it's, it is something you have to do. It's a part of the job. Like some, some people, some kids, their dads are in, in the army and they're gone for most of the they're year. So it's like everyone, everyone has it. And you see people like Angelina Jolie, she's got how many kids and she has to go away and work. Like it's, it's a part of it. But then when you're providing and you're giving everything you can to your children and, you, and your family and stuff like that, it makes it all worth it. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe in. Oh, yeah. God. Uh, what's the quality in people you cherish the most? Sense of humour. I love people that can have a laugh and let their hair down and don't care what people think. That's a good one. Do you have any role models in your life? Role models in my life or yeah. people that I just look up to in general? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> the second one. Just people that I think are... Uh, for some people who motivates you also to do things, you know. I, I remember you said once that you want to have body as rock. Dwayne Johnson, yeah. <laughs> he's a, I knew you were going to say that. He's my, he's my inspiration. I want to You're probably the only one who thinks that Dwayne Johnson is amazing. I think he's amazing. Oh, he's sick. No, yeah. I'm not he's awesome. Like the size of him, everything, his movies, he's just a badass. The charisma. Yeah, I, I think he's great. And all of his, like, when he's tweeting and stuff, he's so inspirational. <laughs> it's mad. The scariest thing you ever done in your life? scariest thing I've ever done I've not really done many scary things well, probably like some uh, it was just a very very important decision uh, what you were scared about what's going to be the uh, result um, of it I don't really know I've not really had a scary moment yeah, probably, probably like probably like picking the first spider up with my own hands it's probably the scariest. <laughs> no actually doing splash that was the scariest oh, here you go. my heart was racing did you actually thought that you can, you know, harm yourself? Did you? Yeah, no, you can. Like I yeah, hurt myself bad. I, I literally, I sprained two of my ribs doing that. Like it, it hurts when you don't land right, and when you're doing it live on TV, oh, it weren't even like it was pre-recorded. It's live. That and then the, all the crowd are there, and it all goes silent, and then you have to do your dive. That was probably the scariest moment. And that's where size doesn't really help, probably. No. You no, know, as bigger you are, as the biggest splash is gonna. Yeah, be. it hurts more. Awesome. Good talk.